Today I'm going to show you guys how you can have a weed-free garlic garden, set up everything with Korean natural farming or other natural inputs that you're using for fertilizers, and a lot of other special tips that you're not going to see anywhere else. So I'm going to show you guys how I'm setting up my landscape fabric this year. In the past, like everybody else, I've burnt the holes with the barbecue lighter, which works, but it's kind of annoying. You can't do a ton of them at the same time because this landscape fabric will catch on fire and you make extra holes. So this time I want to try my soldering iron and it's cutting through it no problem and I'm doing six sheets at a time. I've got it nice and taut and in alignment. So I'm doing three foot beds and I'm doing seven garlic in a row, six inches apart, eight inches to the next row. So no template here guys, we're just gonna use our soldering iron to make the next mark, giving myself about an inch and a half on each side and cutting through. And now I don't have to measure anything else. I can just look at my next mark and match everything up with the next hole over. So when you're pulling apart your garlic seed, the easiest way is just you can just pull it apart by hand and break everything out into the individual cloves. If they give you any trouble, just use a dull knife and put it in between the crack, twist it, and you can pop it out and get the bulb started. And then all of these smaller ones, because I'm trying to grow seed garlic, I don't like to plant these, I eat these. Or if you don't have a lot of garlic seed, you can totally use these and these will grow out into bulbs just as well. But we want the biggest, healthiest bulbs that we possibly can when we're trying to grow the highest quality garlic. So now it's time to do our garlic soak. And I recommend that everybody does this to inoculate their garlic with beneficial microbes and nutrients. And this is just gonna set your garlic off to a way better start and prevent any possible disease to them. So I put about three gallons of water into here and 14 pounds of my seed garlic. Soak your garlic for a minimum of two hours and a maximum of 24 hours. Going beyond 24 hours really isn't going to help you and it's really going to hurt you more because those wrappers will get so soaked that they'll start to fall off and those wrappers are nice to have as some initial protection for the bulbs inside. Now, the next things that I'm going to add are Korean natural farming. So these are minerals that I've made, the nitrogen sources that I've made. I like to do everything that I have that will benefit my garlic so if you guys just do seed soak solution that's great but if you want to add more here's my ratios that will work great for you many of you don't do korean natural farming so what can you use instead for your nitrogen source i recommend a fish hydrolysate and i'll put some products down in the description and some videos down in the description if you want more help learning how to make or do some of these things my mineral source is from diluted seawater which is extremely easy to make it's just 30 grams of salt in one liter of water. And then you dilute that one to 30 into your total solution. One of the most important things in your seed soak solution are inoculants to help protect them from fungal disease, bacterial disease. And this is why you'll see some people online say to soak your garlic seed in alcohol or hydrogen peroxide. I do not recommend this. I recommend that you coat in beneficials to protect and that will fight off any sort of bad guys. This is the natural farming way. So if you wanna learn how to do more of this in depth, sign up for my email list down below because next spring and summer, I'll be teaching a full length Korean natural farming course, teaching you guys how to make all of this amazing stuff yourself so you don't ever have to buy nutrients again. So one of the things I wish that I would have done this year was broad fork before I added my garlic. We haven't had rain in three months, so my soil was a bit harder than I thought it was gonna be. I didn't use a garlic dibbler to plant, I just used my hands, which in the middle of the bed was great, but on the outsides, it was, it was a little bit difficult to get as deep as I wanted to. The broad fork is a tool that I like to use before I do my root crops. So turmeric, carrots, it's really important to try to do this beforehand. Almost everything else I do no dig, no till, I never touch my soil. Um, but for some of these root crops, especially if you have a hard clay pan lower down, this really helps you to get better crops and it helps your soil to improve faster over time, especially if you're using these dry amendments and inoculants like I'm using, it helps it to penetrate down into the ground 
a bit easier as well. This is a tread light broad fork. This is my favorite brand, hands down. I've tried the Johnny's, the Metal Creature, everything. And if you guys wanna get 5% off on one of these, use the code Nature's Always Right, and I'll put a link down in the description. This has a bunch of different design features that I like over all the other ones. It's made in the USA by a small family. So now I'm adding my dry amendments, which are azomite, which is a rock dust for minerals. Then I added in Indigenous Microorganisms 4 that I made, which is a very powerful inoculant for the soil, adding fungal and bacterial life. Then I'm raking it in, just trying to incorporate that, get that a little bit lower into the ground. Then we watered this in because my beds were very hydrophobic and they weren't accepting a lot of water. Next, we added Jadam liquid fertilizers that I made, uh, with our, which are high nitrogen source from chicken and sheep manure with hay. I diluted that one to 20 with water. And then I also made Korean Natural Farming Maintenance Solution, which is one to 1,000 OHN, one to 500 fermented plant juice, and one to 500 brown rice vinegar, as well as fish amino acid, which is fermented fish. Then we watered in two gallons of that per bed. So it was a concentrated amount, watered in my beds further to help that soak into the ground more. And then that is the nutrition for these beds for the length of the garlic. I'll also be fertigating, throwing fertilizer through these drip tape that you're seeing me lay out as well. And then we mulched with some of the grass that we pulled off of the beds earlier. So when do you want to plant your garlic bulbs? Well, I recommend October up to the first or second week of November for most of us in North America, depending on your climate. But if planting garlic or any of these other crops is confusing to you, especially throughout the season, I would highly recommend checking out Seed Time down in the description. It is a free software that allows you to customize and organize your garden. And it does this all according to the location that you're living and adjusts your frost dates, tells you when you should plant according to that. So it makes it really easy to plan out a garden each year. And I've had a lot of fun playing with it and organizing my garden, you know, as, as you get bigger and bigger gardens going, it gets harder to manage and organize and know where to plant and what to plant. I used to manage all of this on an Excel spreadsheet that I built for my market garden. Um, but now that I have this software, I'm just using this to organize all of my garden layouts and it just makes it more stress-free so that I know when I'm planting and what, and then I can customize it according to my microclimate and exactly what I want to do each year. So it's free, just check it out down in the description. And I hope it helps you guys because it has helped me a lot this year. I've got all my soaked garlic, I strained it, and now it's in here. So now what I can do is put a few of my cloves and how I'm planting it, I'm brushing aside the mulch and then I'm using the, my two front fingers to dig down. And then when it's about two inches minimum, four inches max, with the dried side facing down, then I'm going to cover the soil up, give it a quick pat. The tip part is where the sprout of the plant will come up and grow up and out. The sprout will find the light and come through each hole. This is the fastest way that you can do it when you have landscape fabric in a mulch like this. So these edge ones where I don't have as good a soil, I'm putting the smaller cloves there. So that's a good technique to use up some of your smaller, not as good cloves on areas where you're not going to get as good a garlic anyway. Another option is to use a hori hori knife, put it down, cover. That's a little bit slower though. Uh, if your soil is soft enough, then you can just do it by hand. If it's a little bit harder, use a knife like that and it will be a lot easier. Or you could use a garlic dibbler to stab it in. So this is why a lot of people don't use landscape fabric with garlic. Uh, because this is slowing down my process. A lot of people use a garlic dibbler, which is about six to eight of these uh, spikes, about three to four inches. You stab them down, drop the garlic in, and then you can just cover it very easily, which I've done, but I get such bad weeds here that I'd rather take a little bit of extra time in planting it by hand since I don't have an insane amount of garlic to do so that I'm not having to do any weeding at all. 